for those of you just joining us, welcome to uh, Picture Perfect Icons in Evergreen. This is by Kate Coleman and Jennifer Weston. I'm going to go ahead and drop the live caption link in the chat again, and I'll do that a couple more times throughout the presentation. Um, if you're having uh, any issues with Hopin, we've noticed a uh, few people have in the last session try a different browser or try using incognito or private mode. Um, and with that, and a thank you to our platform sponsor, Evergreen Community Development Initiative, and our captioning sponsor, Mobius, I am going to turn it over to Jennifer and Kate. Okay, let's see if I can share the right screen here. I think so. Let me move that out of the way. Okay, now I think you're seeing what we want you to see. Okay, so welcome to Picture Perfect Icons in Evergreen. I'm Jennifer Weston, Product and Education Specialist and a Veteran Cataloger at Equinox Open Library Initiative. Um, I'm Kate, and um, we're both members of the Evergreen Cataloging Working Community Group. Um, I am the Technical Services Manager at Jefferson County Library and the Cataloging Committee Chairperson for the Missouri Evergreen Consortium. And I like how Jennifer put it, a, a veteran cataloger. <laughs> yes, we earn those titles that we give ourselves. Uh, Kate, I would like to invite any and all interested catalogers to join us as part of the Evergreen Cataloging Working Group. There's an open invitation and we'll I'll add us a link to the slide there at the end to invite you to our monthly online meetings where we talk about topics just like this one. I'm seeing in the chat that Ruth can hear Kate, but not me. Can This is Jennifer. Can people hear me in general? Um, I can hear you, Jennifer. Okay, Let's I'll keep go. going there. Okay, thanks. I'll just leave that to you then. I'll keep going. So let's get started. We're excited about this topic, as you can tell from the bright colors and the confetti, and we will throw cats in there before we post these slides online. But um, as we were putting this together, Kate and I talked about a lot of different aspects of, of search and, and icon formats, but we were able to narrow this down to just a few focused talking points. But we recognize that this conversation is going to be one that's going to be ongoing in the evergreen community especially the cataloging community. But for today's presentation, we'll look at these specific topics. We're going to look at search and icon format overview, just to give us some context for getting started. We're then going to look at the current definitions of these icons, uh, well, the search and icons. Also look at how you can change and correct icons in your own database. Look at some creative cataloging options, and we mean that in the kindest of ways, and look at some resources that we want to make sure we we leave for you at the end of our presentation. So let's just start with a general search and icon format overview. We're going to look at three different sets of definitions for search options and formats that appear in the staff catalog in the OPAC. We're going to look at advanced search, which are those select box options, and we will have a slide for that coming up next. We'll look at the basic search, just those format definitions that are available in the drop down box. And then we'll look at the icon formats. So these are three distinctly different search options that are controlled just a little differently behind the scenes. So first, let's look at the advanced searched options. I just want to pause here to say that all the screenshots in our presentation are from Evergreen version 3.6 with the Angular staff catalog, but most of the functionality we're discussing today works the same in earlier versions, even if the screen looks a little different. And Kate and I decided we didn't want to do a live demo today and a live database. We're not going to risk that. So we're going to rely heavily on screenshots. So let's just look at the boxes that we have here. And this is what I mean when I talk about the, the advanced search box options, <laughs> because to me, there's just a lot of boxes that appear here. These are available when you enable the advanced search option on the search screen. And each of these is determined by positionally defined data elements that are found in the bib record, either either in the leader or control fields. And we'll talk more about what that positionally defined data element means a little later. But what we want to show you now is that all the search box options here are tied to one specific field on the bib record. For example, the first one you see all item types comes from the leader, position 06 as it were. The next three that you see there, the all item forms, this comes from the tag 08 tag. So the forms 
will come from that field. Then you get languages that will come from position 35, and then you get the audiences and so forth. But each box is just one single field that you can search on. Good news is these can be customized. But while they can be customized, it's important to note that even though you can customize these individual boxes, they will not influence the separate search and icon format definitions we're going to be talking about later. This is a standalone kind of search, which is in some way why it, you know, it appears in a very appropriate way to where they're just kind of boxed in. You can just search within this box and it doesn't connect to, to other search options. So um, these are your advanced search box options to just continue to repeat that over and over. So looking at just one example, and we won't spend a lot of time here, but I wanted to look at this one. If we look specifically at item type, which we may also as catalogers refer to as record type, and if we remember that these advanced search interfaces displaying values that directly correspond to values in the bib record in just one value. So what we're seeing is all item types. It's essentially saying, what are the mark definitions for item type or record type, as it were? The stock evergreen installations will display these standard terms. So if you kind of go down the list here, this might be what you're seeing in your own catalog. We're seeing cartographic material. We're seeing, if you come down here, manuscript cartographic material. Then you have manuscript notated music. And down towards the end, some of my favorites, the three-dimensional artifact or naturally occurring object, because that's what patrons ask for every day, is the three-dimensional artifact or naturally occurring object. Point being, these are all standard terms right out of the Library of Congress definitions or the MARC definitions, MARC standard definitions, as it were. Good news, we've already said. This list can be customized. Individual values in this list can be removed or can be renamed if you have server administration access and the staff user interface. Also, entire search boxes can be removed. Yeah, so if but you have to uh, work with your admin support provider to do that. That can't be done through the staff user interface. But you can remove them completely. You can add additional boxes. If there's something else in the bib record that you want to use as a search box, you can do that. But the really cool thing is to keep in mind that you can customize these. Let me see if we have any questions so far. Let me move along. OK, so while we're in advanced search, we say we can customize it. Here's an example of some of the customizations we've seen already. So instead of these kind of, we'll call them esoteric descriptions of things, you can just say instead audiobooks. You can say books. You can say electronic resource. And you can do all of this, again, through the, the user interface if you have server administration permissions. I won't go through the long list of all the customizations we made here, but you can kind of see the um, how this is a little more user friendly, the list, than the one that was straight out of the stock installation. I did mention that in addition to renaming the entries, you could simply just take some of these out. If you don't want to see the two-dimensional non-projectable graphic, you can just take that out of your list entirely if you're certain that you do not have any data that meets that definition. If your library belongs to a consortium, though, keep in mind that customizations to the advanced search options will apply to all libraries. So any changes you want to make need to be discussed before they're implemented, of course. That was kind of it for the advanced search, the boxes. So I want to move backwards, it would almost seem, to basic search formats. But I did this on purpose because the basic search formats is really when we talk about search formats and icon formats. These are the definitions that we wanted to spend most of our time on because these two do link together in some really creative ways. But they are stored separately in the database and can be defined differently. But in many ways, they just reuse the same definition. So we talk about the basic search formats. We're talking about search for formats. We're talking about this list of formats that's available in the basic search as a drop down menu. And this obviously isn't the full list. We just cut it off because of the space we had there from the screenshot. But both search and icon formats are defined using data elements, again, found in the bib record and other control fields. But unlike the advanced search options, these search and icon formats can be defined as composite attributes. What does that mean? It means they're based on a combination of fields. So it's not just saying, look at the item type and let me search on that. You can combine your different elements into a single definition. And we'll look at a few examples of how we might do that. So 
first example. We'll look at uh, definitions of search formats and icon formats together today, but we'll also be providing an updated version of the search and icon format supplemental handout that if you um, attended some of the Evergreen Cataloging Working Group meetings earlier this year, we've been working on putting this together and we've revised it. You'll see that on a, a few slides later on, but this we're just giving you a few examples for this conversation. So here you see the definition of the all books option as a search format there on the left. The composite attribute definition, and this is a, a terminology that's used to actually define these in Evergreen. These are things that can be controlled through the server administration interface. So the composite attribute definition for all books is just created by considering the record type, the bib level, and the item form, just as it's described here in the middle. But what it's essentially doing is it's designed to provide search results that include only regular print and large print books. So it's saying, don't give me any of the rest of this stuff, just limit it to regular monographs, print, large print, that's all I want to see. And you can do that with your search format from that drop down that we just looked at. But while we're looking at this, we also wanted to say that when you get your search results, you're going to see two different icons. And so this is a really good example that will show us how we can have a search format that is different than an icon format. Search format's a little more general because we wanted to get a little, we wanted to get more of the records coming back to us so that we could kind of um, see what's available as a book. And then we could work, you know, on our own to look for whether we wanted large print or not. So it's a good idea to keep in mind when you start looking at ways you might want to customize these. To keep in mind that your search format and your item, your item, your icon formats can be defined in, in either stricter or more general ways so that your icons can be the most specific definition while your search formats can really be at a little higher level there. Because if, um, if we had used the same definition for the icon formats as the search formats, you would end up with results that would show both on the same record, which is, of course, not what we want to do. But we'll have some examples. Kate will look at examples of why you might want two icons in the future, but clearly books is not one of those. Okay. And then secondly, just another quick example here of all music. It has a general definition, just like the all books that we were just looking at. But this one does return the multiple icon formats. But unlike all books, the all music definition does indeed just use a single requirement of item type. So all it's looking for is this item type or record type equal J for musical sound recording. And if it does, return all of these results. And then it's your item format, your icon format, which will then give you the more granular definitions and the more visual definition in the search results themselves. So again, it, it's given you the, the juxtaposition of how you can define your search format versus your icon format, but how they kind of work together. So now that we just looked at those three, I just wanted to, to do a quick summary here of the three different kinds of search formats we've looked at before we start talking about how we can use these definitions to, to kind of change what we're seeing in our catalog. The first, of course, was the advanced search, which has that general option of, well, actually, let me back up here. I'm using video recordings as my example to compare all three of these. So when we look at advanced search, advanced search, those boxes, has the general option of video recordings, and we renamed it to be video recordings. That's not what we got right out of the MARC standard terminology. Jennifer, it looks like you're muted. Okay, Kate and Jennifer, can you please, I got booted, can you please request a presentation? 
access again and I will reactivate you. Yay, technical difficulties. Yeah, it booted um it actually we all three of us. <laughs> the okay. And the mods. <laughs> Yay. Um, I'm glad to hear you though, Andrea. I'm glad to hear you too, Kate. Um and I did also see Angela noted that a bunch of people dropped from the presentation at the same time. So I wonder if there was a connection issue. So let me uh see if we can get Jennifer back and then we will resume. Um, Jennifer, you need to, I think, re-request presentation access because I don't show you as being a presenter anymore. And if you re-request that, I will let you back in. Come on, Jennifer. I can't do this without you. Sure, you can. Sure she she is. Now. <laughs> Woo. And I was almost done too. That's the unfortunate part. Oh, gremlins. Okay. So I'm not sure how far you heard. I'm just going to stop here and say this was the um, my last comparison here of the three different kinds of searches: the advanced search, the basic search, the icon format. So we just described all of those, and now I'm handing it over to Kate. Take it away, Kate. I'll move the screens as you need me to. Okay. Thanks. Okay, hi everyone. Um, so uh, I did just want to say really quick that before this presentation, I didn't really realize that the search and icon formats were so closely related. So you know, even I'm learning something. This is this is really cool. So we're going to look at those current format definitions now. Um, so on this next slide, let me see. I'm not even seeing slides. Are you sharing slides, Jennifer? You and might need now, to restart the screen share. Yeah, sorry. I think we all, all three of us got kicked. Um, all right. Right. There you go. Can you see it now? Yes. Okay. okay on the next slide now. <laughs> okay. Come catching up. There you are. There we go. Okay. So um, how does Evergreen even know what icons to use? Uh, so Evergreen uses a combination of mark fields and various media formats to drive the icons that are shown in the OPAC and for everybody. So based on the item information, these different fields and codes may be used individually or in combination. So we're going to go over these in depth soon, but here's just a quick overview. So first there is the leader 06, which uh, just means it occupies the sixth character spot in that character string. Um, and this is the type element. The, uh, this one character code defines the characteristics and components of the record, the whole record as, it, as a whole. Then we have the leader 07. Again, that means it's occupying the seventh character spot, which is the bibliographic level element. And that indicates things like mode issuance and relationship of component, that kind of things. Um, next is the 008 field, specifically the form cell, which is position 23. Uh, this code, of course, indicates the form of the material being cataloged. And lastly, there's the 007 field. This physical characteristics field, uh, it has a great helpful wizard in Evergreen, and it contains uh, many coded data re uh, related to the physical attributes of our resource. So um, next is this a great table for what general combinations are needed to be used to get the icon labels you're wanting. Um, as you can see, sometimes it's a single character that drives the icon, while at other times you have to have a combination of fields to get it. And this is one of the um, uh, documents that Jennifer said that we will be linked to afterwards. Everybody will have access to this um, this table afterwards and um, this is a great table. I'm going to be using this all the time and on the next slide it goes into even more detail um, for all the different um, search and icon labels. So 
this is something that everybody will, it, it's a great resource to have on hand. So next we're going to go pretty specific into these different, you know, character positions. So the, the leader 06, the type. So the leader field has a couple of key fields that we will use for icon retrieval. The leader 06 is the type field. So in the Evergreen official documentation, the term item type is used. Uh, we wanted to mention that just so that it's not confusing because this type field is for the record as a whole. While the item you are cataloging, of course, is a huge factor in the type, this field is for the whole record, no specific, no specificity of the item or items. Um, when you right click on this type cell, you do get a list of these choices, which is super handy. Um, if I'm not mistaken, this is the one that, um, can, can these also be changed, Jennifer, to, um, to change what, what you want to call them? Maybe they can. I don't yeah, know. They can. Okay, mm -hmm. awesome. They can. I, I didn't know that you could do that, so that's great. So when you right click on the, the type cell, you get a list of these choices. Um, it's super handy. In this example, an O is chosen because this rec this is a record for a kit. Uh, Jennifer has, she's one slide ahead of me. I'm still on leader 06. She's trying guys, we're getting it together. All right, so yeah. And make it bigger, but I think that there's a, I think you have to do that in your own screen there. I, I've made it full screen and enlarged on my side, but it doesn't appear to be um, reacting and hop in, so. Anyway, oh, okay. That's right. there's, there's an icon in the lower uh, right that looks like a kind of an open box and anybody who wants to see it in full screen can click that and then you'll be able to see the slides much bigger. Thanks. Good deal. So, okay, for this leader 06 example, an, an O is chosen because this record is for a kit. So that single character drives the icon. So next is the leader 07, the, the bib level. Now this character spot is for the specific item being cataloged. What is the item you have? Is it a single item? That would be a monograph item. Is it a magazine or a serial? That would be an S, like in this example. So you, also you can right click in this cell to bring up your option list. In this specific sam example, there's an A in the type field and an S in the bib level field. If you chose a different type field, it would change the icon somehow. So for instance, if for some reason I had a J in that type field, it makes two icons appear. The serial and magazines icon as well as a musical sound recording icon. Uh, so this illustrates how in some instances it's a combination of characters that drive the icon and sometimes it's just a single one. Okay, so in the 008, position 23 is the form. There's one specific character position, the 23rd position, that is for this form value. Whatever item you have described here. So the most obvious example for the form field, of course, for all of us catalogers driving the icon is for large print material. When the leader 06 is an A for book and a D is placed in the form cell, the icon changes to large print. But if that type field contained anything other than an A for book, it would either change the icon or make the icon or make no icon appear at all. So um, as we keep saying, it's sometimes it's just one character and sometimes it's a combination of, of several of them. Okay. And then the 007 physical characteristics. Now the 007 is one of my favorite fields in a bib record. I love it. When cataloging any type of AV materials, the 007 field is imperative. In this audiobook example, even if the leader is filled out to say it's an audiobook bib, if this 007 isn't filled out, no icon will appear. This 007 field drives the icon totally. The icon magic only happens when that 007 is completed, and luckily enough, there's a handy dandy wizard in Evergreen to guide you through filling out the whole field. So you'll see that uh, one example of the characteristics wizard in that uh, bottom left picture there. Um, and uh, also, when you're doing a specific character spot, 
uh, it shows up in red in the string field on that top box. So you're you're doing your changes in that bottom box, and in the top box, you you can see exactly which character um, cell you are are changing. So um, let's look specifically at how we'll change and correct these icons. We we looked at uh, different combinations that we can use. We can use. So let's let's do it in action here. What needs to be done in the bib record to get that icon that you want? If there is a wrong icon, let's see what big bib changes we need to make to help these icons be all that they can be. Uh, here's a specific example of how one character holds all the power. Uh, we have two items here. One is a DVD and one is a Blu-ray. So let's say the scenario is our patron wants to have a massive Harry Potter marathon and watch all eight films. They come to the library's catalog and we want them to see that we have both the Blu-ray and the DVD. Uh, when we catalog these items correctly, the icon clearly lets them know which bib record to put a hold on or go to the stacks and find. So for AV materials, this 007 field holds all of that power. The one letter within the 007, a V for the DVD and an S for the Blu-ray, makes the change in those bib records to show the correct icon. So it's just that one single letter that, that changes that icon. I'm glad everybody liked my little rocket ship. I even asked if it was a little too corny, but let's have some fun. Okay, so in this next one, uh, this is another example of how it all comes down to one character space or one letter. We need to differentiate our regular print and our large print items to make them easier to pinpoint for our patrons and staff. So our patron, here's another scenario, our patron needs the next book in their cozy mystery series, but they prefer to read the large print. So correctly cataloging these items by using the correct characters in these fields makes all the difference for our staff and patrons. So in this one, of course, uh, like we, we alluded to earlier in that form field, having that D in that cell is what drives that icon to move the, the book, to move the icon from a regular print icon to that large print book icon. So everyone can see it clearly. We're all visual people. These icons are, are really, important for our patrons and staff. But um, sometimes two icons can be handy. So here the item I have is a combination of two different forms. So how am I going to best reflect that, that in my bib record? Uh, this will come down, of course, to library or consortium best practices, but here's the scenario I went through to get the end result that I wanted. So this is a studio album, as well as a video recording of the live concert. Some might end up separating these items and circulate them separately, that's just fine. But let's say Library A has decided they want to circuit together. But we don't necessarily feel like one form takes precedent, precedence over the other. We don't feel like this is a CD with an accompanying DVD or vice versa. We feel both of these items deserve top billing, so to say. So how do we reflect that to the patrons? So here's what I tried first. I put a P in the type field for mixed materials because that made sense to me. I put two separate 007s in for each physical item, physical type of item. Uh, but this made the icons a kit and a DVD. I took the P from the leader and it took the P from the leader and it made the kit icon and took the second 007 and added a DVD icon. I uh, just wanted to throw it out there that it didn't matter if the sound recording 007 was first or second, the DVD 007 seemed to take precedence in the scenario. Um, so this was kind of close to what I wanted, but I thought I'd try again and see if I could get a little closer. So next I tried placing a G for video recording in that type cell and tried giving the 007s a switcheroo. Again, wondering if sound recording went first in the order, it might change something. What this did was, was take the double icons out altogether and that G in the type cell overrode anything else I did. So nope, this wasn't what I wanted either. Uh, this was my trial and error period, so I tried again. So next I tried a J uh, in the 
type character position. It stood to reason that I had tried a G for video recording before, so I might as well try the music code. So I put that J in there. Uh, I changed that code and I left my 007s the same and bingo, this is exactly what I wanted. A double icon appearing, letting the patrons and staff know that this item has both a DVD and a music CD. So for us in our library system, we thought this icon combination would be more helpful to our patrons and staff than just say a kit icon. A kit icon wouldn't have been wrong, but we felt for us, this was the best way to help with discovery. And that is our job as catalogers to help with discovery. Thanks, Kate. I love those examples. And you're right, sometimes it's it's just what's best for your patrons. And so right or wrong is, is subjective for us, but as long as we know how to change the icons, that's what our what we do. So let's talk about things we can do creatively. And next screen. There we go. So let's start with my library wants to define searcher icon formats differently than the way they currently do. Where would I start? First thing you want to do is review different definitions or review the definitions that exist. Explore the possibilities like we've looked at today. You can just rename things. You can group them a little differently if you want to search format that pulls all audio together, whether it's an audio book or music audio, that kind of thing you can do just within the, in the user interface itself. You can change visibility settings if they're things you simply just don't like and want to go away. So this is kind of that first level of review before you start trying to, to redefine things or create new things, I should say. Look at redefining them. Just explore what possibilities are there the, with your, within your current purview. Beyond that, think about your bib records themselves. Because as Kate just walked through, we can spend um, trial and error, which is absolutely the the best way to figure out sometimes what the best thing to do with a, a particular bib record is when you want to show multiple icons like that, like that or you don't want to show them but then you start thinking about okay what does that mean for all of the other similar records out there what do i need to do to update them and consider what you're doing are you thinking about updating your definitions to match your data or do you really just need to update your data to match the definitions and that, again, is not a right or wrong answer. It's a matter more of what is best for display purposes for your patrons within, you know, within certain limits. Once you've decided really what's going on with your data, ask yourself if you can identify a subset of those records that just need updating. So that if you have a, a collection of kits that do have CDs in them and you want them all to look like that example that Kate just gave us, then how do you do that? Can you just throw them all in a record bucket? Can you do that and then change them manually? Or is this bigger? Is this a, a data project that really needs to be undertaken? And by data project, I mean bringing in other people so that you're not just doing these one by one or, or doing these in a record bucket. Is this something that you might want to, to talk to admin support for? Another option beyond just renaming things or, or looking at it, doing some data changes, is what about those icons? Now, we've seen through trial and error and through the examples, there's sometimes that icons just don't show up and you really would like them there. Sometimes they're there and you think, I really don't like that one at all. And software and video games is one of those that tends to, to show up at times when we just don't think it's the most appropriate icon is probably the kindest thing to say. Sometimes it's absolutely appropriate. Sometimes you really have a video game in front of you and you really can use that video games. Sometimes you don't. So when we look at the software and video games definition as it stands now, that is going to show up anytime the record type or item type shows an ELM for computer file. And we know that there are bib records out there that very legitimately have an ELM for computer file that are not software and video games. So what happens if you just take the ELM away altogether? I don't have a screenshot to, to confirm this for you, but if you take the ELM out of the type field, catastrophe does not ensue. Nothing bad happens except for that software and video games icon just goes away. Now, again, this would be on a record by record basis. It's not something I would recommend as a permanent definition or a permanent fix to software and video games. But if you've got a small subset of data out there of, of things that, that you're 
that it's really just confusing patrons because you have something that just looks so out of place. You can play with those. Part of the trial and error can be just what happens if I don't leave anything in a particular field. And that's an acceptable thing to do in trial and error, especially where, you know, we're giving you this chart of the way things are now. Then start your own. Build upon what we've already given you, that, the, that chart that we've given you. Just kind of start your own. So you say, if I want to show two icons, here's what I do. And throw in those examples of what, what your 007s would look like if you want both of them. That We'd highly recommend doing that. And then sharing it with the community. Put it out on the listserv. But what if you really do want to create a new icon? How do you go about doing that? Well, we've got an example here, and we want to thank Noble for sharing this one with us. This is a custom icon that they have are now that they've implemented in their libraries, and they used a 942 field to do this. And this works because the 942 field doesn't really do anything else because it's a local field, so it's not tied to any of the existing definitions. So when we look at this one, they just took the 942F. They put the term in there, play away view, just as you see it here, play away view. And so that is what is now giving us this particular icon. You see, it's a custom icon. They had to define the icon themselves, and you upload that into Evergreen. And then you had to define the definition that goes along with it. And this is a really a, a presentation on how to how to create those new icons because that's really a, a collaborative effort. Um, some of it can be done through the server admin and the user interface. Like we talked about the record attribute definitions, composite definitions, that sort of thing. But the most important thing is to recognize that it's possible, but then there are also some things you want to consider when doing this. And I really like this one, by the way. This is really cool. We're going to, um, with their permission, we will share some of the other examples that they gave us. We didn't include everything in here. Um, but you know, with Noble's permission, we'll put those out on the cataloging wiki and, and in, include links to them at the end of our presentation when we post it online. So if you're thinking about creating a new definition and using a new icon, for example, I, I see the question there about the uh, archival icon. And no, there is not one currently. That's right. So if you wanted to create one of those, for example, start here, ask the community, and search Launchpad to see if anybody has done this already or if there's an ongoing conversation that can inform your decisions. If not, if you can't find anybody that already has an archival icon and they can help talk about those. <laughs> and I see Elizabeth said, thank you, Elizabeth. We're glad to, to take permission for Noble. If you want to follow the, the, the wonderful example of Noble and share um, the work that you're doing with this, thinking about adding an archival icon, the best way to do that is the Evergreen Lesser listserv or even just that general evergreen listserv in addition to the catalogers listserv just to get attention to ask hey is anybody thinking about this you'll you'll get a response it's a, an absolutely fantastic community so if you do that if you reach the point you're like okay nobody's really doing this yet i i want to try this pull reports of your own data you think you know what you want to how you want to define an archival icon if you look at you know the, the leader and the control fields and you think i've got a really good definition Pull reports of your data and make sure that if you define it that way, that you're not suddenly showing up with thousands and thousands of things that are now going to be defined as an archival icon based on this definition that you want to create. So once you've ruled out that, nope, I'm pretty sure my data is spot on, this is how I want to define it, then where do you go from there? Here's a link to the definition, to the documentation that will walk you through um, how to do this. And again, um, it is. It typically requires system admin access and collaboration with admin support team because not all of this can be accomplished through the user interface. I keep saying that because it's a, not only does it take that collaboration, but it also takes a little bit of time. If you're adding a brand new icon and a brand new definition, it's not as simple as the examples that we were just showing you, the, the trial and error that we can just do because those definitions already exist. If you create a new one, you may have to re-ingest the data, and that's not a fast thing. And you're definitely going to want to go through um, a process of doing this with a small subset first before you make massive changes to your data. And if you have a test database, of course, you'd want to, to make changes there when you're talking about implementing something that will um, not only be used going forward, but that may be I exist in your database. So. That's, we're wrapping up a little early to allow time for questions. We're getting some really great ones, but we recognize that there are conversations that have already started. So it's the reason we kind of call this a continuing community conversation. 
we want to look at some of these stock definitions. I think the one that we keep coming back to over and over is that software and video games. Is there not truly really a better way that we can make that more granular than it is now, kind of just part of stock evergreen? So we would love that. If there are any additional formats that we want to look at, again, more specific, um, there's, we want to look at things like MP3. And we don't really have that right out of Evergreen. There are libraries that are exploring ways to do that as well. And how to utilize RDA fields, which could be another presentation entirely, which could be, you know, we could spend hours talking about this amongst ourselves about how we want to use them. I, I feel strongly that we got to get started and that this could be a, a project that the Cataloging Working Group takes on this year to at least start with those 336, 337, 338, get the content media and carrier in there and start looking at how we can use some of these um, uh, fields that the terminology that already exists so that we don't have to build a controlled vocabulary. It's out there for us to use. So um, preview of some of the things we want to look at. Um, I am looking in the notes. I see Elaine's note that um, for Pines, it's against Pines policy to edit type. Very very good point because you also want to consider what are your local cataloging, not only best practices, but your cataloging, um, your rules, you know, so you should have a manual for what's allowed and what isn't allowed. And of course, um, to be making any of these changes, you don't want to be making it to a production database. Or if you don't have a test database, you don't want to be making it to a, to a real item. You want to create a, a test item to be doing that as well. So there should be best practices is about how you, you test any of this and how you implement any of this, but do it in, in consort with your consortium. Okay. And that brings us to our links out to search and icon formats. That first link is to the official Evergreen documentation. That second link is to that handout that we have. It's actually a, a three page thing. The first page has just kind of descriptions about the fixed fields. Um, on it, and then the last two pages you can print front and back, but th those are the ones that we included in the, the presentation here that Kate reviewed for you. And there's a link to the Cataloging Working Group Wiki. There's lots of good information there and we will be going forward. So I encourage you to, to check that out too, and we always post our upcoming meetings on there as well. So, uh, Kate, anything I missed? Yeah, Beth Willis asks, um, when you were talking about the video recording, when you remove the M, does that impact the search format definition? No, not as they're defined now. It does not. The only thing it does, I'll take that, let me say this, because the um, example I was given was something that's not a software and video game, so that if I take that M out, if it's allowed in my consortium, and I take that M out, then if I search for software and video games, it will no longer show up but I don't want it to. I can still search, you know, of course, by title and keyword and every other kind of um, little search option there, but not just for that, that single thing. If I chose software and video games, it would, it would no longer appear in the search, Beth. Okay, and um, someone asks in our handy dandy Q&A little tab there, um, okay. does Evergreen prompt with options uh, for what the letters mean? And, and yes, if you right click on, um, well, all of the cells that I, the specific cells I talked about, um, those do, if you right click, you do have a list to choose from. Um, and, but I will tell you, I go to OCLC bib, bib formats, you know, almost daily to, to look up things. And, and that is always a comprehensive place that you can go to find what those letters mean. But yes, if you right click in the cell in that 008, uh, in that leader field, the fixed fields in Evergreen, you will get a list to choose from. And I see Melissa's questions. Do you have a link to instructions on customizing the list of formats on the advanced search screen? I do not. But what I can do is point you to it's it's really pulled out of this larger the search and I, the evergreen documentation. It's kind of just a couple of sentences. So Melissa, I think we could add to the documentation as it exists now. So I'll, t I'll uh, include that as a takeaway from this so that we can do something specifically to talk about that as opposed to just saying it's possible. <laughs> we'll do a fruit, uh, some more um, detailed documentation on that. Okay, let's see. What else do we have here? Thanks, Elaine, for the link to OCLC bid formats. 
Janet, who creates the mark record attributes? That's one of the ones that we're talking about that has to have a, um, an admin support person there if it's not something that exists already. So if we want one for 347, that's part of this RDA uh, conversation that we feel like we've been having for, for quite a while now. But it's um, as far as getting it into stock Evergreen, it would have to go through the regular development stages. If it's something you want to do locally, it would just be um, work with your, your admin support team and talk about what the record attribute is. Because I know that um, that's what Elizabeth the, uh, Thompson's given us here from Noble. That's a, a local definition that's not available in stock Evergreen right now. So that's kind of a, a too strong there. If you want to see it for all of Evergreen, it has to go through development. Otherwise, it's uh, something that has to be done by somebody that can, you know, kind of touch the, the server side of things. Let's see. Yeah. Uh, Janet, the instructions for doing that are these, uh, that top link there, the search and icon formats. If you, um, actually, let me back up a couple of slides here. This link, the mark record, act, record attributes link, will take you to the documentation for creating the mark record attributes and then the continuing on from there to do the composite definitions that you would need to attach to those. You're right. Oh, I'm Mary, thank you so very much. The web client does not seem to have a search filter for the coded value map anymore. Um, what you, that's true, and I checked it yesterday too. The, there's a launch pad bug out there for that. And I, I Maybe we can talk about this in the catalog answers group tomorrow for, for those that are able to join us. Um, I know that it looks like there's been some work on 3.6 and 3.7, and it might be back in the 3.7. There's a workaround if you use the old link instead of the EG2, if you use the, the link that goes to the non-angular uh, screens, and I will find those and put those out there uh, too for those links. It's the only workaround I know now that that filter kind of disappeared. Uh, yeah, I agree. You used to be able to focus quickly on the search value definitions. Now you do, page forever. So I will bring that bug back up and pop it out on the cataloging listserv. And I'm sure there are probably a couple of others. As we've moved to Angular, you know, it's a, it's a great uh, project to move to Angular, but we, we keep finding things that uh, we want to revisit and, and that we might have lost and we want to bring back. And so it's part of the community. We'll find them. Uh, Sharon, what version were your screenshots from? 3.6. If the record summary icon is appearing in the top left, do the version you're running. Um, it's possible. I'll have to to check out and see what, what some of the earlier versions look like. The 3.5. Um, I don't think the position of the screen, of the links has changed, of the icons rather, but I'll double check. I've got three or four things now to follow up on. And if you don't subscribe to the cataloging list serve, um, we will put that here at the end of our slides too on how to do that because that's where we'll follow up with some of these questions. This we'll put them, I'll, I'll add the link here. Well, the cataloging group wiki actually has um, a link to subscribing. Elaine, I don't remember where the icon was in previous places. I've been in 3.6 for so long. Not in the mark view at all. Okay, so just the OPAC. It, it shows on top the, the top of the, I think most of the screens now that the just that record summary icon up there. Uh huh. So. Um, oh, the record summary icon. Yeah. I'm still stuck on icons themselves. Yeah, way up top still there in, in the um, in some of the screenshots I did. But yeah, okay. that's something I really like about three six actually. Right, some of your screenshots there, so we can see them, and I recognize we are coming up on time. Okay, yeah, so if we look there at the top of the record summary, yes, that is new once we moved to Angular. Mm -hmm. Yeah, see, I really was thinking. It does make it easier to see if it's correct, that's for sure. I like that a lot. Okay, it looks like we are at time. All right. Thank you so very much, and I'll leave it with our emails up here if you want to get to either one of us directly. Kate and I, thank you. Thanks, everyone. All right. Thank you both uh, very much for not only for an, a great presentation, but for rolling with the technical difficulties. <laughs> um, really appreciate that. And I'm sorry that that uh, got in the way a little bit. Um, so our next uh, next up is a 30 minute break slash no conflict exhibit time. And then there'll be lightning talks um, at 3.30, the next session 
Uh, here in this track will actually be myself and Ruth Frazier talking about new features in 3.6 and 3.7 at 4 o'clock Eastern. So um, thank you all very much, and we'll see you soon.